Hello everyone and welcome. In this video sponsored by Hankook, we are covering one of the common debates surrounding one of my favorite subjects, tires. Beside me, I have three tires, a summer, an all season, and a winter tire. With these three tires, we're going to answer three main questions. First, do you really need winter tires? Second, do you really need all-wheel drive? And finally, since these are all specifically designed for electric vehicles, what is an electric winter tire? Starting from the beginning, do you really need winter tires? The answer feels pretty obvious. If you live in a mild, warm climate, probably don't need them. If you live in a cold climate with frequent snow, almost positively you'll really benefit from winter tires. To understand why, we really need to understand how these different tires perform in winter conditions. So it's a simple question. How much grip do summer, all season, and winter tires have while driving on snow? Well, this is difficult to answer precisely because there's basically infinite scenarios where the results would differ. Things like ambient temperature, road temperature, how much snow, what vehicle are you in, what tires are you on, of the thousands and thousands of options out there, there's a ton of variables. But that's not at all satisfying. So to get a solid answer, I looked at all kinds of different test data where summer tires, all season tires and winter tires were all tested against each other on snow. A bunch of different tests. So from third party tire testing facilities, I looked at academic papers, pulled data from tire manufacturers, and so on. Now if you have a tire stopping distance from a certain speed, you can calculate that tire's frictional coefficient. In other words, how much grip it has. So I did this for a bunch of different tires, all performing braking tests on snow, which gave me an average grip level for each different tire type. For summer tires, the frictional coefficient was about 0.14. For all season tires, about 0.25. And for winter tires, about 0.32. To provide context, a summer tire on dry asphalt could have a frictional coefficient around 1.2. That's over eight times as much grip as the same tire driving in the snow. Now, to really understand what these numbers mean as it relates to driving in the snow, we need to talk about stopping distances. This perfectly illustrates why winter tires are so important. Slamming the brakes from just 30 miles per hour, the winter tires need about 93 feet to come to a complete stop in the snow. The all seasons do pretty well, but still need 122 feet to come to a stop, nearly two car lengths longer than the winter tires. For an emergency situation, that's huge. Finally, the summer tire needs nearly 213 feet to come to a stop, again from just 30 miles per hour. That's more than double the distance versus the winter tire. Okay, so this very clearly answers the question, do you need winter tires? If you're frequently driving on snow, absolutely. It dramatically improves grip, meaning shorter stopping distances in emergency situations and better handling in all snow driving scenarios. The way I like to think about it, if I want to be as safe as possible, I want equal or better tires than everyone around me for the conditions that I'm driving in. If I'm driving on snow and have a great set of winter tires on, I can react better and stop shorter than those around me, maximizing my chances of avoiding a crash. If I'm driving around on those same winter tires, but now in the summer when it's dry, well then I have less grip than everyone around me, which isn't ideal. You want a good summer set. Again, meaning you have the maximum buffer of grip for whatever situation arises. Okay, so for stopping distances, whether you have two-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, it doesn't matter. What matters is what tires you have, with winter tires being the obvious choice for driving in the snow. This leads us to our second main topic. Do you really need all-wheel drive? This is a really interesting question that depends on a couple factors, including how you like to drive and what the terrain is like around where you drive. Under normal circumstances, driving like a normal person on a sunny day with dry roads, you probably won't even notice if your car is front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, or all-wheel drive. There's so much grip available that it doesn't matter at all. Most cars sold today are power limited, meaning they could be faster if they had more power rather than traction limited, meaning they could be faster if they had better tires. But this changes when you drive in the snow, where two distinct advantages of all-wheel drive become apparent acceleration, and driving up inclines. Okay, so first let's look at acceleration. Using the grip numbers we calculated earlier for summer, all season, and winter tires, we can see what the best theoretical zero to 60 time is based on our car having all wheel drive, front wheel drive, and rear wheel drive when driving in the snow. 
For example, a rear-wheel drive vehicle on summer tires would take 37.6 seconds to accelerate from 0 to 60 on a flat, snowy surface. That's an eternity, though switching over to winter tires on that same car would result in a 0 to 60 in 15.8 seconds, certainly reasonable for snowy conditions. A front-wheel drive vehicle with a bit more weight over the front axle and thus more weight on the driven wheels can slightly improve these times, with a 0 to 60 of 15 seconds when on winter tires. But with all-wheel drive, the potential 0 to 60 times are dramatically better, with all-wheel drive and winter tires capable of providing an 8.4 second 0 to 60. That means while casually driving, you likely won't notice any loss of acceleration on snow. Winter tires combined with all-wheel drive means you can accelerate with a very normal pace. But there's some really interesting things we can learn from these numbers as well. A front-wheel drive vehicle on winter tires can accelerate significantly quicker than an all-wheel drive vehicle running summer tires. This once again illustrates how tires are the most critical factor for winter driving. All-wheel drive, if the driver prefers, can allow for better acceleration. It's nice to have, but not exactly necessary. The necessity of all-wheel drive becomes apparent, however, when you start driving in mountainous regions and tackling inclines. This is just a matter of physics. All-wheel drive can climb a steeper slope than two-wheel drive because all of the vehicle's weight rests over the driven wheels. On a rear-wheel drive pickup, for example, most of the weight is usually over the front tires, and any weight on the front tires can't be used for acceleration, so it's all wasted. This is why you may see folks adding sandbags to the back of a pickup truck that's rear-wheel drive. Now, let's be very clear. Adding weight to a vehicle does not improve its traction, but in the case of a rear-wheel drive pickup truck, if you're adding weight to the back of the car, you're shifting the weight distribution back. So the percentage of the overall weight that rests on the rear wheels versus the front wheel increases. And by increasing the percentage of the overall weight that's on those rear wheels, you improve acceleration. So weight distribution, as well as what the driven wheels are, become very important when driving up inclines. All right, so once again, let's look at summer, all season, and winter tires equipped on all wheel drive, front wheel drive, and rear wheel drive vehicles to see the maximum incline each combination could drive up. We'll refer to incline in units of percent grade, similar to what you'd see on highway signs. And remember, percent grade is rise over run. So if you have a 45 degree angle, that's one over one, which gives you a 100% grade. For all wheel drive, the math is conveniently very easy. It turns out, whatever the frictional coefficient is tells you exactly the maximum theoretical grade you could climb. So for winter tires with a coefficient of 0.324, they could climb a 32.4% grade. For front wheel drive and rear wheel drive, this is significantly more complicated to calculate as it's dependent on the weight distribution as well as where the center of gravity is located. Regardless, using realistic parameters, you can get a good understanding of how steep of inclines you can handle. So something really interesting happens here. Because the amount of grip you have is very low, the incline you can go up is also very low. So front wheel drive tends to have the advantage here. If you were to have a lot of grip, the incline you would go up would be much steeper, so you'd have more load transfer to the rear wheels, and rear wheel drive would end up being advantageous. But in snowy conditions, you tend to see the opposite play out. So the maximum incline a front wheel drive and rear wheel drive vehicle could ascend on winter tires turns out to be about 18 and 17% respectively. And yeah, as you can see, having only two wheel drive versus four wheels driven means you're cutting the incline you can drive up nearly in half. In fact, on a snowy hill, an all-wheel drive vehicle on summer tires could potentially climb a steeper incline than a rear-wheel drive vehicle running all-season tires. This illustrates a really powerful point. All-wheel drive is very important when it comes to driving on any sort of snowy incline, giving a pretty simple logic matrix to determine if you need winter tires and all-wheel drive. Are you driving in the snow? Yes, then winter tires are a good idea. Are you driving in a hilly region? Yes, then all-wheel drive is a really good idea. 
And again, if you're only driving on flat ground, you can still benefit from all-wheel drive in terms of acceleration. It's just not necessary to get from A to B. So finally, let's dive a bit deeper into this tire right here. Hankook's winter tire designed specifically for electric cars. Generally speaking, winter tires have some serious sacrifices. They're louder, they have more rolling resistance, and they use softer compounds. All of these aspects are problematic for electric cars. You're going to have more noticeable tire noise, you've got less range, and because EVs are really heavy and the compound is soft, you're going to have more tire wear. Realistically, you can't eliminate these challenges outright. If you want good grip in the snow, you have to make sacrifices. But Hankook did put a lot of effort into making this a quiet tire, and if you've ever driven on winter tires, you'll readily know that they are quite noisy. There are very clear reasons why winter tires are loud. First off, they have deeper tread depths. This is important for traction on snow, but it means you have more air pumping through the tire as you drive on the road, which is loud. You also have gaps in the tread block edges. Again, these are important for snow traction and also for water evacuation, especially on tires where you don't have as many main grooves, which aren't good for snow traction, but really help in the rain, hence their prevalence on summer tires. But these big gaps in the tread blocks means more tread movement and more air pumping noise coming out from the tire, an issue summer tires don't suffer as much from. So how do you make a winter tire quiet? Well, tread pattern plays a big role here. So you'll notice the V shape is staggered, so it alternates from each side on where it's contacting the ground. This spreads out where the air is pumping through the tire, which reduces noise. You also have differing length tread blocks, which breaks up the pattern hitting the road, further reducing noise. So if you were to use a symmetrical V shape along with equal size blocks, well it would create this high pressure point, which along with the rhythmic nature hitting the ground would create more noise. They also have knurling inside the grooves, which cuts down on cavity resonance. Finally, you'll notice acoustic foam inside the tire, further reducing the noise that reaches the cabin. Ultimately, it results in a tire that has an A rating in Europe's standardized noise testing, the highest rating available. And in my own testing on my car, it actually equaled the noise level of the all-season tire, and it was even quieter than the summer tire, which was impressive to see. This is a genuinely quiet tire, yet it can handle real winter conditions. Now in terms of rolling resistance, yes it was a focus and the tire does have stiffer sidewalls to accommodate for the heavier weight of an EV, but there weren't major sacrifices made in order to minimize rolling resistance. So versus an all season or summer tire, you can expect to take a small range penalty in order to gain that traction in winter conditions. But they did do something really interesting aerodynamically in order to help with that range penalty. Standard winter tires tend to have bulky, blocky tread blocks leading to the edge of the tire where it meets with the sidewall. This tends to be less aerodynamic, so for this tire, Hankook uses a much more rounded edge. In wind tunnel testing, they found this reduced the drag coefficient of the tire by 0.003. Okay, at first, this doesn't really sound like that big of a deal, and for combustion vehicles, it really isn't. Modern combustion cars tend to put less focus on aerodynamics than electric cars because you can make up for range easily with a slightly larger fuel tank. EVs though tend to have really, really aerodynamic shapes. These shapes are super sensitive to small changes. In wind tunnel testing on a very aerodynamic EV, Hankook found that the improved aerodynamics of the tire can reduce the overall drag coefficient of the car by 0.02. Keep in mind, a modern EV might have a drag coefficient as low as 0.2, so 0.02 is a huge percentage difference. A combustion car without a big focus on aerodynamics won't see as big of a penalty based on tire selection, because there's already so much turbulence around the wheel well. Overall, as this is Hankook's latest winter tire offered, they say it matches the snow performance of their previous winter tires, but with better noise, better dry handling, better wet handling, and better wet braking, so it's a much more well-rounded tire without giving up snow grip. And with that, I hope you've enjoyed nerding out on tires as much as I have. A big thank you to Hankook for sponsoring this video and letting me pick the brains of their engineers. If you enjoyed this, I have two other videos deep diving into each of these other two tires, which are absolutely fascinating, so I'll include the links to those. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.